Hey, 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 and welcome to Financial Confidence on WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. I'm your host, Lynn Demons, listening to episode 84 of Financial Confidence. Thank you so much for tuning in to Financial Confidence here at WYTV7. I'm your host, Lynn Demons, America's number one financial rebound coach. Yeah, I said it, America's number one. We thank you so much for joining us for this show where we're talking about how to prepare for the upcoming recession. But before we get into that, go get your pen and your paper. But I also want to remind you of the guiding principle of the show, which is Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, we also implore that you pray over your finances so you can do those things that you're called to do. We're helping you to make your money, to keep your money, and grow your money so you can build generational wealth and leave an inheritance for your children's children. So if you will, commit this prayer uh, and bow with me. Lord, help us to value the things in this world that are really valuable. That's our relationship with you, our lives, and our families. Help make us responsible stewards of your financial resources, and let us trust your holy word, your eternal glory, and our son Jesus, in his name we pray. Amen. Yes, guys, I told you this was going to be a good one. So how do you prepare for the upcoming recession? Don't know if it's going to happen at the end of 2019 or the first six to eight months of 2020. However, I do know that what goes up must come down. So in that case, it is inevitable that we must prepare so that many of us are not caught in similar situations that a lot of Americans were caught in with the economic downturn of 2008. At that time, a lot of people lost their homes, they lost their jobs. I mean, there were so many different things. We all knew somebody, one to two degrees of separation, essentially, that were, was impacted um, by that recession. So how do you now prepare? So we're going to continue to talk about the handwriting that's on the wall. What do we see happening now? Currently, we've noticed that the Fed recently cut interest rates. And the reason that the Fed cuts the rates is because they are seeing the handwriting on the wall themselves. They are trying to stop um, the economic impact that they put, the danger that they see on the horizon. Um, not only have we heard that, but there's been news of multiple companies laying off, massive layoffs in companies such as Verizon, GM, Ford, Citigroup, and countless other organizations that we haven't even heard of. And unemployment has been at lows for a long period of time. And you may say, yeah, well, they just reported that unemployment continues to go down. And that's true. However, the types of jobs that people are now doing are not paying as well as jobs did 20 and 30 years ago. So what is the strategy that you need, that your family needs to ensure that you guys are prepared for the next downturn? So what we're going to talk about today is both having a defensive strategy as well as an offensive strategy. And I know these are usually terms that are akin to a sports analogy. However, it also works here with your finances so that you can make your money, keep your money, and grow your money. And not only grow your money now, but also when the economic downturn does happen, when that recession does happen, That is the opportunity now. That's the greatest transition of wealth that happens over and over and over. So why not position yourself so that you can now be on the upside of what's happening here? So first, let's talk about the defensive strategy. And I have some notes here that I so I make sure I go over everything that I wanted to cover with you today. But that defensive strategy, number one, is essentially paying off high interest debt that bad debt. If possible, pay off all debt. However, that may not be probable for most people, but there can, you can be intentional and focused on paying off that high interest debt 
because that's going to now allow you to be able to do things differently and it's not going to cost you so much um, in the event that the recession happens. The next thing that I suggest or highly recommend that you do, and this is not only during times of a recession, but this, essentially this is at all times. Uh, and that's having that six, three to six months of emergency fund, having that available to you in the event your company that you're currently working with or working for does happen to have a layoff like GM and Ford and Verizon recently did. So how do you now prepare for your family, protect them until you're able to replace that income? That three to six month emergency fund, it's more likely for uh, most people. However, nine to 12 months is also good. So making sure you do that at all times, having a strategy around, how do I now protect my family to ensure, right? And I know we think about the day-to-day, -day, we think, oh, I'm currently living pay to paycheck to paycheck now. How am I supposed to get this three to six month emergency fund when that's what I'm currently doing? The number one thing, guys, that I suggest and highly recommend is to get the mindset right. Because oftentimes there are things that we are spending on that we can cut. And the beauty of it is you're cutting these things temporarily. It doesn't mean that you're going to cut it forever. You're cutting these things temporarily so that you can get to where you plan to get to. And if you go through and you actually do the math, you'll see that it doesn't take as long as you think it would take to be able to make these things happen. So make sure that you are strategic in this process and we're talking about your defensive strategy now but being strategic at all times in regards to how do you set us up that emergency bucket for you and the number one thing that helped me just to be completely transparent here was putting it in a completely separate bank account putting it into an online bank account with was uh, how i was able to get to the point to be able to have six months nine months or even a year's salary that aside, having that in an online bank account, put it out of sight, out of mind, and it was automatically deducted every month from my account over to that uh, online bank account. So setting yourself up, what works for you? That might not work for you in the same way that it worked for me, but figuring out what tool, what strategy, what account, you know, however you need to do it so that you can be strategic in that process. The third thing as far as your defensive strategy is when things do go awry, because we all know what goes up must come down. You have money invested in the stock market. And most people, when things went awry in 2008, 2009, most of them jump ship, right? And what do I mean by jumping ship? Most of them panic sold their shares in these companies because they saw the value going down and they didn't want to lose money, lose money, lose money. So what I want to say today is don't panic sell when the market crashes. What I want you to do, and, and be cognizant of this fact, this conversation is dependent upon your age, right? Now, if you're at retirement age and you will be retiring within the next year, okay, then that's different. You do need to set yourself up so that you can sustain the monies that you currently have. However, most people in their 40s, in their 30s, or even in their 50s, because they had some more time in their early 50s, would panic sell. And by panic, panic selling, it is a huge disadvantage for you in the long haul. Instead of preparing to panic sell, you need to look at this as an opportunity oh, those are some great shares of stock that I got then at that price. But now because it's lower, I can get in and get more because the price is now lower. So it's about shifting the mindset around what you're going to do and being strategic about it now. Having that conversation with yourself now, if you know that's a challenge area for you, how am I now going to make sure that I don't panic sale when the bottom does drop out? Okay. So those are very key uh, parts for the defensive strategy. You also need an offensive strategy.
the number one thing I'm going to say is to build your treasure chest, right? What do I mean by building your treasure chest? we should be invested in a, several different arenas but you should have some cash that you have stashed away so that when the bottom does drop out of the market then you're able to get in this is like the, the time that you strike gold because all of those wonderful companies that you now want to invest in you can think of it this way this is the sale this is going to be your black Friday, equivalent of your Black Friday after Thanksgiving sale. When the bottom drops out of the stock market, this is when your chest, that's your cash that you have stashed away for investing, this is going to be your opportunity. Whether you're investing in the stock market, you're investing in real estate, you're investing in gold, it does not matter. When the bottom drops out, that is your prime time, that is your opportunity to make your money, keep your money, and grow your money. Number two, the number two thing in your offensive strategy that I want to highly recommend that you continue to do is to invest systematically. And most investors call this um, dollar cost averaging, right? Because sometimes you're gonna buy in and the stock, let's say, for example, it's $25. Sometimes you'll buy it at 30 and then sometimes others, you'll be able to buy it for $20 or $18 and 50 cents, okay? That dollar cost averaging, whether you're doing this on a monthly basis or a weekly basis, is going to allow you to figure out where that average cost of owning those shares will be for you. And that typically allows the average investor to continue to build their nest egg. Ultimately, slow and steady wins the race with this particular strategy. However, when you have your cash chest ready to go when the bottom drops out, you would be amazed at the opportunities that are available for the prepared. The third part of your offensive strategy that I want to um, bring home to you is also update your resume. You say, Lynn, why update my resume? I have a good job right now. The best time to find a new job is when you do not need one. Because when the bottom hits out and you're already unemployed, then things look differently, not only to you, but also for that uh, potential employer. So making sure that you're updating your resume, you're getting out there, you're networking, and you're doing those things that you need to do to continue to build your repertoire. See, that's going to be most beneficial for you. So while things are going good right now, go out there and build that resume. Go ahead and shop your resume around. Post it out there, right? You never know what nuggets you're going to receive back. And you never know who's looking for those talents and those skills that you currently have. And the opportunity will always be yours. See guys, these are both offensive and defensive strategies that you must put in place to ensure that you're now protecting your family for what comes. Whatever comes, you'll be prepared. I'm Lynn Demons, America's number one financial rebound coach. Yeah, I said it, America's number one. If this information has been helpful for you or to you, go on over to wytv7.org and make a donation. That's wytv7.org. Also like, subscribe, share this, make sure that your community hears this because this is valuable information that we all need. Whether we know that we need it or not, it is truly invaluable information that helps you to get to your next level. We thank you so much for tuning in to WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network. I'm Lynn Demons, and this has been Financial Confidence.